I think the main message of my work is that the human being is a tool user. We use tools to interact with the world. We use tools of language to interact with each other. And through that tool use, we are transformed both in our experience and our own understanding. Now, here's a picture of a cell phone. The cell phone is an amazing piece of technology. It isn't just a landline without wires. It has totally changed how young people interact with each other, how adults interact with each other, but it's also, of course, changed what we can do with our environment. We can photograph it, we can transmit the information all over the world. We can now, of course, access the internet. It's an incredible tool which is not just convenient, it actually changes how we think, how we interact, and the kind of skills and competences that we need to do that interacting. Now, when thinking about the human being as tool user, we're actually thinking of something else. We're realizing that actually we have a model about what people are like, how people function. That model's often a metaphor. Tool user is a metaphor. And as educators, we need to be aware of what those models are. One of the dominant models in education and in cognitive psychology and other areas for a long time has been that the human being is a problem solver. Now, what is a problem solver? A problem solver is a person who, usually by themselves, addresses the problem, struggles with it, uses logic and other methods, and comes to a conclusion all by yourself, inside your own head. This is useful. It has its advantages. But the tool user goes beyond that. It says, not only is it inside my head, but it's through the tools that I have that I access, interact with, and indeed resolve the problem. But you also do this with other people. The problem solver model tends to assume that we're isolated individuals working inside our own heads, contemplating the problem. The great uh, medical artist Vesalius represented this rather well in his very witty picture of the skeleton contemplating the skull. So here we have a model of a problem solver, a lone person, a single problem. I've played around with this image and produced an image which shows two skeletons and two skulls. What does it look like? It looks as though they're talking to each other. It looks as though they're discussing the problem. Suddenly, the individual is not all by him or herself. The individual is in dialogue. And that idea of dialogue operating socially is a crucial element to taking tool use seriously. Now, traditionally in in certain areas of psychology, in social science and education, we've had this model where the individuals at the bottom of a kind of heap of power. At the top, as you see on this picture, we've got society or culture. Then we have an arrow of influence or power down to what we call usually the socialising agents, parents, teachers, even peers. And down at the bottom of the heap is the poor individual being shaped and framed by all these forces. The individual is passive. The model I want to work with in my own work and the model I want to think about in education looks different. It's actually a triangle. Now here we see in the triangle we have three, three points, the same three points as in the top-down model, society and culture, the individual interacting dialogically with others interpersonally, and the individual operating by themselves uh, as an individual problem solver or tool user. The point is there, is, there aren't any arrows of direction here. The individual is continually in interaction with the culture, drawing on cultural resources through media, images, metaphors, symbols, or just simply physically interacting with the world. And simultaneously, the individual is interacting with key other persons. It's a continual process of interaction to individual, individual to culture, and both ways around. It's a triangle without directions, a triangle which presents a total picture. The individual tool user, but operating at the same time, collaboratively with others, in a continual iterative process back and forth. The individual continually interacting, drawing upon culture, being influenced by culture, but also in his or her own way contributing to culture. It's a dynamic, dialogic, dialectical process.